today uh, we'll discuss first of all what is the emf of a cell and what is the terminal potential difference of a cell the difference between the two after that we'll do cells combination cells connected in series cells connected in parallel and also some mixed combination where the cells will be connected in series as well as in parallel there in a given network and also what are the advantages of those type of combinations like when the series combination of cells is beneficial or advantageous when the parallel combination is advantageous and what are the conditions to get the maximum current if you have cells which are to be connected in a mixed combination so let's take emf of a cell and terminal potential difference of a cell emf of a cell we take potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is open circuited basically it will be amount of work done per unit positive charge in transferring it from one terminal to other terminal of the cell so emf of a cell we are defining as the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is open circuited that means when it is not being used whereas terminal potential difference we take as the potential difference across the terminals of a cell when it is closed circuited or when it is being used let's see how we get these two related to one another first of all emf of a cell and terminal potential difference of a cell you might be doing for the first time because up to class 10 we never talk about these two terms separately whatever we take as the emf of a cell we take also as the potential difference the reason is up to class 10 there whatever cell we have considered we have taken them as an ideal cell that means they do not have any internal resistance but all practical cases if you take the cells are also made of some material some conducting material is there some electrolytes are there between the plates of the cell so when the charge carriers move from one plate to other plate of the cell definitely they will also experience some opposition whatever opposition is being offered to them that is called as the internal resistance of the cell this we are representing with small r that is the internal resistance of the cell and a small e is the emf of the cell suppose this is connected to an external resistance capital r and uh, if i assume that the current in the circuit is i then this current i we can write as e by r plus r because r plus r is the total resistance of the circuit so the current is given as e by r plus r and if i take the potential difference and we represent it as v this is your i into r suppose v we assume as the potential difference so this is i into r remember this potential difference is also across the terminals of the cell because this is simply a conducting wire there so this will be equals to e by r plus r into capital r or this can be written as your e by if i take this r in the denominator it is r by capital r this is your v if we take a small r equals to zero if we take a small r that is the internal resistance is zero then v will be equals to e that is the potential difference across the terminals of the cell is same as its emf so this is what we have done uh, in class 10 and you have learned so far but all as i told you that uh, all cells will also have some internal resistance there or practical cells there so if you consider that this small r is not equal to zero definitely terminal potential difference and emf will be different 
Another case which we can take, suppose if I take that capital R is infinity, that is this resistance, external resistance is infinity, when it will happen? It will happen when the circuit is open. So if R is infinity, then V will be equals to E by 1 plus uh, 0, because 1 by infinity it will be there, and that is your E. So this is exactly what we are using in the definition of EMF of the cell. EMF of the cell is equal to potential difference across the terminals of the cell when it is open circuited, when R is infinity. Otherwise, terminal potential difference which we take it as V, it will be the potential difference across the terminals of the cell when it is being used. One more thing you can notice, as we take R, if it is not equal to 0, that means it has some value, obviously V will be less than E, because the denominator term will be greater than 1, and in that case terminal potential difference will be less than EMF of the cell. Okay, So for all cases you will get terminal potential difference equal to EMF of the cell, as it has some non-zero internal resistance. But one more thing you must keep in mind, which is often asked in the exam also, can the terminal potential difference of a cell be ever greater than EMF of a cell? If you take this formula, then definitely you will say that it is not possible. But this is possible only in one case, when the cell is being charged. When we take a cell which is being charged, in that case terminal potential difference there will be greater than the EMF of the cell. Because for general case if I take one we have taken V equals to I into R. Another expression for V we can write also as E minus I into R or if I represent it as capital I, this is I into R. So obviously, if R will have some non-zero value, definitely it will be V less than E, because you are subtracting. Why we are taking this way? Because when you consider the potential difference, here when we move in this case, we are moving from this side there, that means we are moving in the direction of current. So this potential difference across the internal resistance of the cell will be negative. And for the cell, we are moving from negative to positive terminal. So taking rise in potential positive, definitely this term will be positive. So we get this situation. But so V will be less than E. But when a cell is being charged, so suppose if I assume that uh, we have a cell like this, which is charging it. So it is sending current there. So this current will flow in this direction. This is the cell which is uh, charging this one. Suppose it is your E, capital E. So this time if I take the potential difference, how much it will be? This will be, now we are moving in opposite direction of current. So in that case it will be your plus I into R and we are moving there from negative to positive terminal, so in that case it is plus. So here you can see that V will be greater than E. And here what we have? V less than E. So when a cell is being charged, that time the terminal potential difference will be more than EMF of the cell. But in general case, EMF of the cell will be uh, more than the terminal potential difference. Let's start combination of cells. First we are doing syringe combination of cells. So suppose we have M cells. We are taking M cells, each of EMF E and internal resistance are connected in syringe. We have suppose uh, M cells and uh, each of EMF E is there, internal resistance R. It is connected to external resistance capital R. Suppose I is the current through the circuit. So net EMF of this circuit will be how much? 
it will be your m times e because we have m cells each of emfe joined in series so the net emf will be m into e total resistance offered by cell all these m cells they will offer resistance due to their internal resistance so it will be your m into r whereas if you take the effective resistance of the entire circuit so effective resistance will be how much it will be capital r that is the res external resistance value and uh, these are m into r which is the resistance offered by the cells due to their internal resistance so this is r plus mr hence current in the circuit i will be equals to me by r plus mr so this is the current in the circuit so this is the general case what we get for the cells which is joined in series now let's see uh, under what condition we should connect the cells in series so suppose we take one case that capital r that is the external resistance value is very large as compared to the internal resistance value or the resistance offered by the uh, cells there so the current expression in that case if r is very large we can neglect this m into r so it will be your me by capital r which can be written as your m into e by r now what is this e by r this is the uh, current offered by a single cell if only one cell is there then it will send the current e by r so total current in the circuit is m times the current due to a single cell obviously this connection is advantageous because if you have a number of cells you have joined them in series and due to connection in series now if we take the total current in the circuit it is m times what could have been sent by a single cell that is the current sent by single cell so this is advantageous but if you take the case 2 where external resistance is very small as compared to resistance offered by the cells it is m into r so the current value then it will be equals to how much m e by m into r m e by m into r when we neglect this capital r so which is uh, e by r which is the current due to a single cell so this is the current due to a single cell that means we have a number of cells we have joined them in series and still we are getting the same value of current what is sent by a single cell so there is no uh, role of the cells joined in series or uh, no advantage of the cells to be connected there in series if the total current what we get is same as the current sent by a single cell so it is of no use so when external resistance is very large as compared to the resistance offered by the cells then they should be connected they are in series so that we use them advantageously now let's take the parallel combination of cells this time again we are taking the cells of emf e internal resistance r but this time we take suppose we have n cells each of emf e and internal resistance r connected in parallel so we have n cells each of emf e internal resistance r connected in parallel and uh, this is connected to external resistance capital r again i is the current through the circuit so suppose we take the net emf this time the net emf will be e only because all cells are of same emf and they are connected in parallel so the net emf will be small e total resistance offered by cells that is due to their internal resistance as we have n cells of internal resistance small r connected in parallel so the resistance offered will be your r by n effective resistance for parallel combination then we take effective resistance of the circuit of the entire circuit if you take that resistance that will be your capital r plus small r by n so the current in the circuit i will be equals to e by r plus r by n so this is the current in the parallel combination of the cells circuit 
So now we can take the different cases as we have done in the last case when the, we have the connected the cells in syringe. So this time again as case one we are taking external resistance very large as compared to resistance offered by the cells. So if capital R is very large as compared to R by N, I will be equals to E by R plus 0 because uh, N is uh, very large there, it is tending to 0. So in that case, we can uh, consider this one uh, very small as compared to R there. So R will, uh, current I will be E by R, which is the current due to single cell. If you have a single cell, it will also send the same amount of current there. Whereas, if you take second case, when capital R is very small as compared to R by N, that is the resistance offered by the cells there in parallel. So, in that case, I will be equals to E by R by N, which is N times E by R, which is N times the current due to single cell. Obviously, this is advantageous. Because now we are getting the current in the circuit, which is n times, that is the number of times, number of cells, n times the current due to single cell. So obviously this is advantageous. So what we can conclude? If the external resistance is very large as compared to resistance offered by the cells, then the cells should be connected in series. That is advantageous. Whereas if the internal resistance of the cells is large as compared to external resistance, then the cells should be connected in parallel. Now we are taking mixed combination. Means there will be cells joined in series as well as uh, they will be parallel there. So suppose we assume that we have M cells, each of EMF, E and internal resistance are connected in series. We have cells joined in series forming a row and there are suppose a M cells there, each of EMFE internal resistance are connected in series. And we make N such rows there. We have N rows there connected there in parallel. So, if it is sending current I through this external resistance capital R, let's try to find out the expression for current. First of all, the net EMF of this combination will be M into E because we have the M cells joined in series there, so the net EMF will be M into E. Resistance offered by cells. In each row, we have M cells. So resistance of one row will be M into R, which is the internal resistance of the cell. And there are N such rows. So obviously, M into R will be divided by N, which is the number of rows, as they will be connected there in parallel there. So effective resistance of the circuit, effective resistance of the circuit if you are taking, it will be equals to capital R plus MR by M. Hence, you can get the current in the circuit as I equals to net EMF ME divided by R plus MR by N. That can be written, if you take the LCM there, then N will come in the numerator there, it is MNE divided by NR plus MR. M into N, if you represent it by N, capital N, which is representing total number of cells. Because we have M cells in a row, N such rows we have there. So the total number of cells will be your capital N, which is your M into N. So the current will become equal to Ne by NR plus MR. Now let's take for this mixed combination of circuit for cells, we want to find what is the condition for current to have maximum value. So the condition is, if you take the expression for current, Ne by NR plus MR, for maximum current, this NR plus MR should be there having minimum value. Or the condition basically we get, NR must be equal to MR, then it will have the maximum uh, current there in the circuit. And if you use this one, then we can write R by R equals to M by N. How we say that NR should be equals to MR for maximum current? For that, of course, you can derive using calculus also. 
but we are using it a uh, simple algebra not calculus for maximum current this denominator term that is your nr plus mr should have minimum value so this nr plus mr should have minimum value if you take now nr plus mr we can write this one as root over nr whole square plus root over mr whole square it is as good as nr plus mr and then we can write or uh, root over nr minus root over mr whole square plus 2 times root over nr into mr if you want minimum value of this then this term should have the minimum value this is a perfect square root over nr minus mr whole square this is a perfect square and minimum value of a perfect square is zero so if this is zero definitely we can write this root over nr minus mr zero or nr equals to mr or you will get r by r equals to n by n so this will give you relation of the number of rows and the number of cells to be connected there in each row when you want maximum value of current there in the circuit